Welcome to Why Is This Good, a podcast by the Naples Writers Workshop. I'm Christine, and I'm here with John. Hey, John. Hello. All right, John, it's your pick. Tell us what you chose. Oh, my gosh. You just broke the form. I don't know if people are going to be able to follow along. Uh, your turn. What'd you pick? <laughs> I picked a story called Girl by Jamaica Kincaid. All right. And you're going to read from the beginning? I'm going to read from the top. Wash the white clothes on Monday and put them on the stone heap. Wash the color clothes on Tuesday and put them on the clothesline to dry. Don't walk barehead in the hot sun. Cook pumpkin fritters in very hot sweet oil. Soak your little clothes right after you take them off. When buying cotton to make yourself a nice blouse, be sure that it doesn't have gum on it because that way it won't hold up well after a wash. Soak salt fish overnight before you cook it. Is it true that you sing Benna in Sunday school? Always eat your food in such a way that it won't turn some Someone else's stomach. On Sundays, try to walk like a lady and not like the slut you are so bent on becoming. Don't sing Benna in Sunday school. You mustn't speak to war frat boys, not even to give directions. Don't eat fruits on the street. Flies will follow you. But I don't sing Benna on Sundays at all and never in Sunday school. This is how to sew on a button. This is how to make a buttonhole for the button you have just sewed it on. This is how to hem a dress when you see the hem coming down and sew to prevent yourself from looking like the slut I know you are so bent on becoming. Tell us why you picked this or uh, how you came across it. Well, this story is, I've been encountering it in anthologies since for 25 years. So it's always been on my radar. And I was just flipping through books when we were trying to pick a story for this, just trying to find something. And um, I saw the title and I was like, hey, I'll pick that one. Refresh my memory because I was going to ask you this before we got started, but did we share this in the workshop at one point? Did we bring this in as a form of flash fiction? Because I've read it and I'm pretty sure we had a conversation about it. And I think it was in our workshop workshop our short story group if it happened in the workshop i was not there for that i didn't introduce myself to this story but i think i've read it before and i thought we had come across it maybe you read i mean you could have read it in a um, a short story class or something you know like at a workshop or something long long ago like i said i've encountered it for many times over 25 years so it just comes up it's like one of those stories anyway yeah it's definitely like a good example of would you call this flash fiction (laughs) that's a good question because there there are some people who would define flash fiction according to certain qualities that like this this is flash fiction because it has this quality whereas i always think of flash fiction as just it just has a word count as long as it's a thousand words or less it's flash fiction doesn't matter what what it does or what it accomplishes or what it fails to accomplish like you know does it have to tell a story does it not doesn't matter it's just as long as it's a thousand words but at the same time i think this was written before we started talking about flash fiction as a thing people were writing short short stories well before we started we coined the term flash fiction. I think flash yeah, fiction is so. either a description of something that was already going on or somebody tried to create something new and they named something that technically was already going on. I wouldn't call it flash fiction because I think it predates flash fiction, but I would call it flash fiction in that it's short. <laughs> that makes any sense yeah and it's also doing something whether or not this was part of the definition of flash fiction it's doing something almost experimental in its form it being this single sentence i'm pretty sure i mean technically no it's it's separated by semicolons instead of periods but they're all individual sentences okay but yeah there's no periods yeah there's one well john what is a sentence unless it ends in an exclamation point a question mark or a period well when i'm talking i don't end my sentences with periods so all of those sentences are still sentences. When I punctuate you in the newspaper, I <laughs> put a period or a semicolon, depending on whether you've rambled. And this one has semicolons. Wow. I don't want to have this discussion because because <laughs> I'll lose because I'm, I'm so ill prepared for an argument about this, but um, we disagree. However, yeah, it's doing it's something experimental in terms of form, whether or not it's a single sentence. This is not the type of writing you would have, you expect to encounter in a short story and a very short story in flash fiction, especially in a novel, whether it's periods or like complete thoughts, like it reads as a list. It's a presentation of a series of things some is saying, but they're not con- necessarily consecutive. It's not like a single, it's not a monologue. It's like they say this, then they say this, then they say this, but those could be separated by weeks, days, like a, a couple of minutes here and there. You know, we don't know. It's just a collection of all those things interspersed or interlarded by two moments in which the person being spoken to responds, which are italicized. 
So yeah, it's a really interesting form. It's not something you you see. I'm sure somebody copied it in some way, but this is relatively unique. Right. Well, and to that point, this not being necessarily consecutive sentences, but things that people have said, it reads almost like a list or like clearly like a set of instructions or all commands for the most part. If it's not a command, it's some kind of form of advice where it's like, you know, this is how you do this. It's either this is how you do this or do this kind of That's right. alternatively. That's right. Yeah. And it obviously covers like a wide range of household tasks or sort of these expected interactions that a young girl might have. And then there's that refrain that you read, I think at least twice in the section that you read and it gets more and more pronounced (laughs) throughout where, you know, we can't just tell you how to act like a lady. We also have to tell you that, remind you that we're telling you this because, you know, if we didn't, you would just be this full blown whore, whatever that means in 1978 (laughs) when you're iron Ironing your father's clothing. I have a feeling a whore is anyone that irons incorrectly, let alone <laughs> has <laughs> sex with several men. Like I, the bar seems much lower for being a floozy. But uh, yeah, so it makes for this thing where despite it being seemingly formless list, there's this added momentum with the repetition of that refrain where you're anticipating it and you know that it's coming and coming and it's going to come again and there's variations of it and then it ends the way it ends, which we don't, I guess, have to give it away. But will you read the end? I kind of like the last like couple things about the bread. Oh, yeah. I like the, the way it ends too. Always squeeze bread to make sure it's fresh. But what if the baker won't let me feel the bread? You mean to say that after all, you are really going to be the kind of woman who the baker won't let near the bread? Yeah. So, I mean, I had you read that because like I said, I think this refrain is kind of like building to something. And this is flash fiction in the sense that you can, we've talked about like this being one of the definitions of the flash fiction that you can kind of hit on like a singular emotion in the course of something super short. And the singular emotion seems to be kind of like, I've given you these instructions and you're still failing me. But what's interesting about it is like that the girl at the very end, it's as if the narrator is like talking directly to the girl the whole time, right? With these commands and instructions. And then she the girl kind of chimes in and says like in those italics but what if the baker won't let me feel the bread and we're supposed to take that as the girl finally like interrupting this narrator and then the narrator's like are you serious i've been telling you how to act like a lady and you haven't you're still in a situation where you're not going to be regarded as one it's not a narrator but i'm just curious who do you think the um the person speaking all the rest of it would be a mother yeah That was my first thought too, but I'm like, I don't think it needs to be a mother, you know, maybe a mother figure or like a, like you could see it being a, um, like a nanny or something like somebody who's raising, helping raise the child, but isn't necessarily the mother of the child. You know what I mean? Right. Like a housekeeper or like a nanny, even it's like someone in a position where not only are they semi mothering, but they're maybe more primed for these kind of social pitfalls where it's like life or death. I guess I assumed a mother figure just because this person is like so hell bent on the whore part of it. Like maybe it's like a nun in school or something, you know, that's like, this is how you be a lady and this is how you also remain a virgin forever. I could even see it being the, um, like the girl of the title is getting a job as a housekeeper and the older housekeeper is giving her advice as how to be a good housekeeper, you know, that kind of thing. Wow. It could be that exact thing, John. And I feel like I've read something or like seen films like that where there, there is that dynamic. Yeah. That makes sense. It's just so such a cool form because uh, it, it creates the character. It's not traditional dialogue even, right? It's not even a monologue. Like we said, it's just a series of statements that the person would have said. And by presenting those, we get a sense of who both interlocutors are, the speaker and the person being spoken to. Yeah. I know it's not a vignette, but it feels like it could be a character sketch in a way, right? That this is... It'd be a cool approach to a character sketch. Yeah, it's like a backdrop. It tells you a lot about whoever this character is, their morals and values, their expectations of others. Uh, We've also surmised their possible roles in society, or at least in relation to the person that they're talking to. And then like, even if all that stuff is like still up for debate, you know exactly how this character talks. But it's like so concise and it's there's not necessarily a plot to it, which is why I would call it something like a sketch, right? Because we don't necessarily know what is happening in the world or we don't have any like, you would struggle to define this story in plot terms. So it feels like a, feels like a sketch. It'd be interesting. I mean, 
you know, if we brought it to the workshop, people at the workshop always want more, right? That is the the constant <laughs> feedback is I want, I want to know more about this character. I want to know more about the situation. I want to know more about X, Y, and Z. You're going to get that from at least two or three people every time you submit something to a workshop. I don't know. I would hope that our, that the workshop could recognize in this, that it is complete, but I know your point. They would have questions that they would want answered about like the context. They would want more context, but it's a complete standalone sentence. Intimate. Yeah, there's lots of, I mean, just in details, like uh, the tasks that the, the character is, is being instructed on, like ironing, planting okra, and uh, that kind of stuff. Like you get a lot of context through those, through that, right? You get the setting, you get where they are and what they're doing. It's, I don't know. It's, this is well so well done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What was that story? This is like very early on when Rob picked the story and it was like the woman giving advice to the girl about like a part, like she's telling her about her life. Goodbye and good luck. Grace Paley. Yeah. So in that one, it's very much like there's more of a story to it, but you're still getting it in this kind of uh, eavesdrop manner where it's not as if it's not straightforward. It's just kind of like you as the reader are not necessarily reading for the plot when you start. You're just reading because this character is interesting and the voice is interesting. And it's like the plot kind of comes to you through osmosis and like through a back door. And then by the end, you realize, that there has been a plot but because this, the story form is like so non-traditional it like sneaks up on you and that is similar here is I guess my point where we can surmise a lot about the context even though it's not given to us directly and it might be something that you have to like think about for five minutes afterwards and I think that this I would describe in modern terms more as flash fiction because it's not that there's less context but there is certainly less plot than this other story that we're talking about that story like I said even if you're getting the plots in drips there is one and it is the story of her pursuit of a guy who comes in and out of her life over many many years they have like some kind of like rekindling in there at the end there's not like a beginning middle and an end plot wise to girl no but there's like still a takeaway and a feeling and a context and an understanding of like social norms in this situation even if we don't know if it's like modern day jamaica or not or where is it the caribbean her name is jamaica um it's somewhere in the caribbean antigua that sounds right anyway what else do you like about this i like everything about this but i think i don't know i don't know if there's much more to say it just it, it accomplishes it does very well in creating the two characters and defining a situation and giving us a feeling at the end it accomplishes what fiction she needs to accomplish and it's done in an unusual way non-traditional way and quickly very short. Yeah. It's hard to like imagine a takeaway for something like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you wouldn't want to tell someone that they could hope to write a story like where a narrator talks to a listener and you like deliver this much information. But I think there's like certainly something to be said for how this kind of dialogue, at least, because this is dialogue, you know, I mean, it's a monologue, but it's someone speaking. How this type of like language works so quickly to characterize someone. We learn so much about someone when they're talking specifically in commands. I feel like you could write a story like this, you know, read this, and then your exercise would be to write a story where a character is giving someone else instructions. Or advice. Yeah, and you'd probably, as the writer, have to do like all of this background work that doesn't necessarily appear on the page to make that monologue interesting, and it would be all of that context coming through. Yeah, I mean, as far as takeaway goes, the power of dialogue to characterize is an, is a good one. I think that's basically what you're talking about. Yeah. Also, I talked about this in a recent episode, but just the ability of short fiction to thwart form, right? It doesn't have to be character, situation, story. It can be a subset of that. It can be something smaller and still give you a satisfying feeling having read it. And yeah. part of that is length, you know, as flash fiction, we don't need a plot the way you would in a novel. The length of a novel kind of demands more of a plot than something this short wood but yes. when you're working in this you can you can set aside those expectations and still give something satisfying those two things are basically what i would learn from this story is just dialogue and form yeah 
I meant to point this out sooner, but this is like my favorite line. And aside from the ending, which we talked about, we talked about the ending being, you know, it builds up to a point where it feels complete, like the story's over, which when it comes to monologues or lists, you run the risk of not knowing when to stop. I talk about this all the time in the like novel <laughs> groups where, where people will do like internal monologues of a character in italics. And I'm always like, why'd you stop? Why didn't you do it for 20 more pages? Why wasn't the whole book that way? And it's like, why did you need it at all is my point. But here, like it does manage to build to a point that feels satisfying and it's the ending there where it's like you mean to tell me that after all this you're not gonna be able to touch the bread okay whatever well but when I was first reading it like aside from that like point and that build up my takeaway from the story the part that I liked the most was like this section this is how you smile to someone that you don't like too much this is how to smile to someone you don't like at all this is how to smile to someone you like completely And I really like that series because that was where I felt like I did get a lot of context. We're we're getting a lot of context in terms of what is expected of this girl. And it might be what's expected of her at her age, at her station in life, her job. We don't know. But the bits about this being how you interact as a human with other humans, specifically the line about this is how you smile at someone that you don't like at all. You still have to smile at that person. That's what's expected. And that really like rung true for me because like this might be set in a different country, like 40 years ago but that is still expected of women in america (laughs) in the 21st century like i loved that line because like my mom has never told me how to smile at someone that i don't like you know but i've learned that that is expected of women through so many other context clues so it's i loved reading it like deliberately here yeah like you could probably write entire essays about politics based on this essay oh people have yes there's that much context i guess is my point you know Know, like a sentence like that that really stuck out for me immediately brought up all of these thoughts and it's rare I think that much fiction that we come across like would be so direct that way yeah I mean this kind of gets into the like we can uh, applaud its ability to create these two characters but then you dive into what is being expressed about these two characters like it's about conformity it's about you know performing towards expectations you know social yeah. expectations there's all kind of political and social implications in this situation right even if it's as simple as any of those scenarios we've outlined before mother talking to her daughter boss talking to her their employee whatever it is all of that is impinging upon the situation to create this problem (laughs) that they are addressing yeah it's deep in that way too can you hear that thunder was that thunder yeah well thanks guys If you enjoyed this episode, consider joining our Patreon. Your support helps us keep the show running. Find out more at patreon.com slash whyisthisgoodpodcast. And for industry news, writing tips, and great short fiction, join our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash Naples Writers Workshop. You can also subscribe to our monthly newsletter at napleswritersworkshop.com.